you can actually create a scenario where in your mind, the perception is that you can't do all the business ever. There's more than enough for everyone. And uh, it all comes down to how much work you're willing to put in and how much uh, business you can handle at one time. No, it's not even work to me, you know, just um, helping people and working hard, like being a hard worker is kind of like a hobby to me, you know, and, um, you know, trying to figure things out and trying to hack the system and learn how to be more efficient and, and scalable, um, building businesses, uh, you know, it's just in my blood. So, you know, I'm just out here having fun. That's why, that's why it seems like I have so much energy. It's not necessarily the energy. It's the fact that I'm just doing what I love to do, you know? I got in real estate when I failed a history class in college and basically dropped out, right? I really didn't have another choice. I knew that I was going to do something that enabled me to help a lot of people and make a lot of money, right? So it had to be both. You know, there were, wasn't really a lot of options outside of college. In college, this was not for me. So when I realized real estate was one class to get your license and literally have the same opportunity as a doctor or a lawyer or one of these professions that you have to go to school for eight to 10 years. I can literally bypass that eight to 10 years with one class, not even a whole semester, like one class. Yeah. Then it was a really easy decision for me to, uh, to dive into real estate. So that was the very, the beginnings of it, you know, and then it just kind of progressed from there. That was going to play out, but I knew that I was going to work hard to do something great that I could then turn around and make an impact on the world in some form or fashion. And that's exactly what's happened. It's crazy that now I'm 40 years old and I really, I've been thinking about this stuff since I was 10. So it's crazy to think about, you know, the timeline of events that's transpired here and everything that's happened in between. It's a blessing to, um, to be able to live, like you call it a dream, you know, cause I've been dreaming about this since I was a kid and to have the power and technology of today to be able to take advantage of it right mm -hmm. and to reach so many people um you know is unreal you know it's just kind of like just there's always something you know around the corner that you never would think you know i mean who would have thought you know we'd be driving electric cars um right. you know who would have thought you know all the social media stuff you know and now there's the cryptocurrencies i mean who would have thought that cryptocurrency mm -hmm. and nfts would actually be uh be a thing right mm -hmm. uh and right. actually like compete with the dollar and stuff you know this summer you're moving around you've got a lot of events coming up mm. uh what's what's happening in your world that you've got coming up well i'm gonna be in uh, nashville next week um that's august 4th i'm uh you know this is the zero to diamond tour so it's my own it's my own events so i'll be in nashville and then i'm going to charleston the week after and then a week or two after that, I'm speaking at the Florida Association of Realtors Conference in Orlando. And then I'll be in Dallas for another one of my events. Um, I'm speaking at the EXPCon. Um, and then I'm putting together Connecticut. And I'll be in Detroit speaking at an event. Uh, Charlotte. Um, those, are the, those are the cities I plan on hitting, you know, before the end of the year. So, um, you know, and then we'll... Then we'll look at 2022 and kind of see, you know, where we are, right? So, yeah, no, I'm, I'm just, I'm just trying to, um, you know, get out, spread the word, try to help agents understand, you know, me, meet these agents face to face, people that have been following me for a while, introduce myself to people who never uh, saw me before, and hopefully, I can change some agents' perspectives and um, try to help agents that, you know, maybe would never had a chance. If you go back to you know, any of the worst market situations that we've seen, right? In the 2000s, um, you know, the dot-com crash, the 9-11, the 2008, you know, era, the pandemic, all those incredibly scary moments produced uh, closings every single day um, by the truckloads, um, you know? So you just have to understand that regardless of what the market does, business continues to happen. And if business ever slows down, that's only creating one thing and that's called pent up demand, uh, you know? And so if something slows down, hold on and get ready because mm -hmm. we're fixing to go for a ride, which is what happened during the pandemic, slowed down for a month and a half. And then what happened? May, we saw one of the large, we saw the largest real estate surge we've ever seen. 
um, as far back as they've been collecting data. You can actually create a scenario where in your mind, the perception is that you can't do all the business ever. There's more than enough for everyone. And uh, it all comes down to how much work you're willing to put in and how much uh, business you can handle at one time. That's what your success is going to be predicated on. It's how much you can actually handle mentally. You know, everybody has a mental cap, a mental capacity, you know, and you got to find out where yours is and, uh, and take advantage of it. Coming from abundance, right? Well, it's not even coming from abundance. Like I said, this is, these are facts. This isn't like a theory or a, you know, this might be how it is, or this is my opinion. This is just facts, okay. right? This is simple math. Um, it just comes down to simple math. Some people can't do simple math. They can't look at dot com crash, 9 11, 2008 pandemic, and say, you know what? I went through MLS and I went through my county records and I realized you're right, Ricky, there were closings that happened every single day. And when I take those closings and multiply that number times two, because there's a buyer and a seller for every deal, there is a lot of opportunities in every market every single day, no matter how bad the market gets. Mm -hmm. It's not. Um, you know, like I say, a theory of, of mine, or this is my opinion, these are facts, right? So it's not even a matter of coming from a place of, it's a matter of this is what it is. How the market's been moving. You wrote a book, List the Last. Uh, you can definitely find it on amazon.com. And, you know, even just type in uh, the search bar, Ricky Cruz, it'll pop up. That book, I think is pretty awesome. Uh, what motivated you to write that? Well, um, you know, when I got in real estate and I made a bunch of money and lost it all in the crash and then came back and by 2014, I was selling 100 properties a year. After I hit 100 deals a year for three years in a row, um, I, I decided, you know what, I think I have something unique here and I want to share it with the world. And so, you know, it's like I got in the business, made it, lost it, came back, made it again, then hit 100 deals three years in a row before even having the audacity to try to share anything with other people mm -hmm. you know when you got coaches that have been in the business two years sold 19 properties and they're out here selling courses for 500 bucks i've act, i actually have a real foundation here of making it losing it come back making it and then keeping it consistent you know and that's a big big deal um and so i decided to write the book to share my journey and my story so, you know, the second book there is called List to Last and, it's, and, and the subtitle is How to Survive Every Real Estate Market Crash. And it really embodies everything that I learned through the big crash and how I came back and created a scenario where you don't have to uh, worry about the market ever again. You know, if you build your business the way that I preach, then you don't have to worry about what a market's doing. You know, you just have to get to work to um, help as many people as you can, regardless of what the market's doing, right? Because again, closings are going to happen every day. And so how do we capitalize on this fact? Uh, you know, first you have to realize it is a fact. And, um, you know, it's people say, oh, should I get in the business? What if I get in the business and the market crashes? That would be a good thing. You know, if the market loosens up a little bit, think about how easy this thing's really going to be. Right. We're already showing some signs of the market starting to turn a little bit. I don't know if that trend's going to continue, but it'll be interesting to see. About it. It's building that relationships and that really just expanded my mind. And it, what it did for me, Ricky, it let me just kind of breathe. That's the entire point, man, is to take the pressure off, right? If you're yeah. sitting around worried about what's going to happen and it's, it's eating up that mental capacity you could spend on helping more people, then that's crushing your full potential. You're not going to reach your full potential if you're worried about something that may or may not happen. And it doesn't matter if it does happen, but you're sitting here spending your, you know, it's eating up your mental capacity. So no, a lot of what I do to try to help agents is just to take the pressure off. And there's a lot of different ways you can do that. You can look at it with, whereas agents are doing so many things, they're doing 15 things at once. Really, they only need to be doing three or four things. You know, but they put all this pressure on themselves, and they're trying to manage 15 different things. Um, and, and, you know, because they're scared they're going to lose if they don't do all of them. You know, you got to be OK. You got to sacrifice a little bit of lost business on a few of these things to really go all in on three or four things. Right. And when you do that and you know where you're going to be in three or four years because of the actions that you're taking consistently, it takes a lot of pressure off. You know, I can I can help people create a real predictable business. Um, you know, even if they're not seeing the results they want to see, doesn't matter. We know where we're going to end up. 
Mm -hmm. you know, and it can take a lot of the pressure off of the short term failures and, uh, you know, uncertainty of the markets and so on and so forth. 